and a strength and a hope and a joy. And a, he's going to do it. It might take time, but he'll do it. He's going to bind up your wounds. God has his timing. And he's going to do it. And he will do it in your life. Matthew chapter 9, 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. Go ye and learn what means I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Christ says, I, I, I want mercy. I want to give mercy. And he, and he wants to give you mercy today. God don't want to pulverize you to the ground. He wants to lift your head up and he wants you to have mercy today. Thomas Watson, a Puritan, says, Repentance is a grace of God's Spirit. Just, uh, Repentance is a grace of God's Spirit where a sinner is inwardly humbled and visibly reformed. Thomas Watson, a Puritan. <coughs> Philip Yancey, Jesus reserves his hardest words for the hidden sins of hypocrisy, greed and legalism. <coughs> Excuse me, Leonard Ravenhill, the world has lost the power to blush over its vice, the church has lost the power to weep over it. Johann Ardent, Johann Ardent, heart suffering because of sin is the best proof the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. John Stott says sin and the child of God are incompatible. They may occasionally meet. They cannot live together in harmony. John Munkey, you will never be able to speak against sin if you're if you're entertained by it. We have to repent. Acts chapter three verse nineteen. Acts chapter three verse nineteen. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out where the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord as we repent there will be times of refreshing in our life Chip Brogan says it is not that we need more power but that we need more brokenness when we are properly broken we will we will find the indwelling Christ is more than sufficient. A little aside, you who uh, are pastors of big mega churches, what you need most of all in your church is not more money. It is not a bigger worship band. What you need is repentance. Psalm 51 verse 17 Psalm 51 verse 17 The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart O God thou will not despise So we've looked that we're at sinners that goes without saying. If you argue against that, you don't understand the Christian faith. Secondly, we've looked at the need to repent. That if we turn and confess, God is ready to meet us in forgiveness. If we're broken about our sin, he will come and bind up our wounds. And then God is ready to forgive. Let's turn to Psalm 51 verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, 
and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 9, Hide thy face from my sins, and what? Blot out my iniquities. God will blot out your sin and forgive you. Hebrews chapter 9, 22. You see, all your sin, whatever that sin is, instead of you being punished for that sin, Jesus Christ was punished in your place. Hebrews 9, 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. It's the blood of Christ that cleanses you. It's the blood of Christ that forgives you. For in the blood of Christ it was shed for you at the cross. Revelation 1.5 From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hebrews 9.22 